What's up everyone? Hope you guys are having a great day. I definitely am. Welcome to this week's video. So I gotta do this kind of quick. I'm getting ready, packing my stuff up, getting ready to go to JMU, gonna do some skiing this weekend. But today we're gonna be talking about these little guys. So I just got the A7S III and one of the new features on that camera is its ability to use CF Express Type A cards. Now, some things I think that you should know about the CF Express Type A cards are that one, in order to do that 422 10-bit 4K 120 frames per second in all intro mode, you're gonna have to use this card. My second point about this card is that this thing is ridiculously expensive now. It is crazy expensive, and I'm gonna say it again, it is super expensive. I got the Sony Tough G 80 gigabyte card, and this alone cost me $193. Yes, that's correct, 80 gigabytes for $193. I also got the Sony Tough G V90 card, and this is the 64 gigabyte variant, and this cost me $94. Now, to compare that with the other option that I think you should get, which is the Pro-Grade V90s, I got 228 gigabytes, so that's 256 gigabytes worth of storage for $94. So, my next point is, I don't think you guys should get these V90 or CF Express Type A cards. I think you guys should be getting the V60 variant of the Pro-Grade series because it's just a lot more bang for buck, and that's what I think all you need. So like I said, since I'm going up to JMU, going up to the mountains, I thought that would be a great opportunity to get some nice B-roll, some nice mountain footage, some nice test footage um, that we can use to compare to all the different Kodaks with all the different SD cards and the image quality that they produce. Now because one of the main features of the Sony A7S III is its ability to shoot at 4K at 120 frames per second, all of this footage you're about to see is gonna be shot at that, of course, at 10-bit 422. So to summarize the test that I want to do, I'm going to be shooting at 4K, 10-bit, 422, at 120 frames per second. But for the CF Express card, I'm going to be shooting that in all intro. But for the V60 and the V90, that's going to be in the regular XAVCS mode. So my main goal with this whole video and for this test is to see if there is a significant difference. Is there even a noticeable difference between all the different file formats and the codecs and the SD cards that makes buying one of these worth it. But alright, I'm gonna finish packing up, head up to JMU, shoot some of this footage for you guys. Um, so go ahead and look through it, let me know if you guys can see any difference, and I'll see you guys later.
All right, so what do you guys think? By the way, I'm visiting Brenna up over there, up at JMU, she's somewhere over there in the corner. But so yeah, after looking at the footage a bunch of different times and even pixel peeping, I really couldn't see a difference between the different modes and the different cards, especially not enough to make up for the difference in price. The only thing that I did notice was in the last set of split screen clips, and that's with the V90 card. Uh, when it was in slow motion, it was a little bit choppier than the other two. But that was only in that split screen format, and when I showed you guys the full screen playback, uh, it was smooth just like the other two. Now that might be an export error on my end, but I tried to fix it, and no matter what I did, it still was choppy in that split screen format. But so yeah, I'm personally going to stick with the V60 cards. Um, maybe going with the V90 to do some of the 60 frames per second in the all intro, but I personally don't see a need to go in the all intro mode, even with scenes that have a lot of motion. The all intro mode, because it does encode every single frame, you're gonna get really big file sizes from it. So because of that, when you're unloading the card, that's gonna take more time. When you're processing it in Premiere or whatever you use, that's gonna take more time than the other codecs. So that's something I think you guys should consider in your decision. But all right, that's gonna do it for me. I did wanna say I edited this whole video on the M1 MacBook Pro. Um, I have a lot of stuff to say about that, a lot of opinions, a lot of comments, and that'll be coming up in a future video. But so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for me. Let me know if you guys have anything else in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already. Hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified when I do post, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.